Well, good evening and welcome, friends, to another broadcast of the Renewed Covenant Fellowship. I am your host, Brother David Jones, and behind the camera is my wife, Miss Sharon, and we come, we're coming to you live from our home office in Salisbury, North Carolina. We appreciate another opportunity to come to you on a great Shabbat, time for Sabbath again. Hello, Brother Paul. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you all of uh, those who are joining us by way of Facebook and those who are joining us by way of YouTube. We appreciate your support in this ministry. Hello, Miss Peggy. Appreciate you being here tonight. Hello, uh, Pardells. Thank you guys for, for joining. Uh, while we're getting started, uh, share this to your page, tag your friends in it, uh, uh, invite them to be a part of the broadcast tonight. We're going to be continuing, uh, hoping to finish up our series and study on the covenant. Um, my goal tonight is to finish up. I'm not going to do a song. We're just going to uh, get started with the blowing of the shofar and have prayer and go right into, uh, right into the teaching time. Uh, so do take an opportunity to invite a friend, uh, share this to your Facebook page, uh, tag friends uh, in it. Uh, also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Renewed Covenant Fellowship is our YouTube channel. We, we're so thankful for what Father has done for us and uh, thankful for the opportunity that has been uh, granted to us to be able to do the things that we do. And uh, uh, so blessed, uh, so thankful, and uh, glad to be a part of, uh, of the work of Yahweh. Just a small part. We're just a small part of the work of Yahweh, but we continue on each and every week. Uh, we do want to continue to pray for our friends and family, uh, those that join us uh, each week uh, on, on Facebook and those that join us each week uh, on YouTube. We want to keep those folks in our prayers. Also, uh, if you have not seen what's transpired in our nation uh, this week, um, uh, just another uh, level of demonic influence. Hello, Miss Jennifer. Appreciate you being here. Shabbat Shalom to you too. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, Governor Cuomo in New York uh, has uh, signed uh, an abortion bill allowing abortion up to just before birth. And uh, we are headed uh, down a spiraling, slippery slope of degradation in our society. Uh, this nation uh, is not a nation uh, that is one nation under the true God, uh, true God Yahweh. They are under, this nation is under the God of greed and the God of money uh, and the God of this world. Uh, hello, Miss Catherine. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we do not serve that God and this nation and the nation that we are born in and that we live in is not a Christian nation. It is not a nation that it wants to follow the laws of our creator, uh, but they have thumbed their nose at God's law and God's commands. And I find it very interesting that uh, many of the people that um, advocate uh, for uh, uh, the right to life, they advocate for uh, or they advocate against abortion uh, and they say that it's a violation of God's law, yet in the same breath they say that God's law is done away with. And so uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Uh, God's law is God's law, and it's always going to be God's law, and, and abortion is murder, and that's part of God's law, part of the covenant, and uh, you can't say that, God, that it's a violation of God's law, and then at the same time say that we can do whatever we want to because we're not under the law, and so we either are or we aren't, one of the two, and so I want to pray for our nation. I want to pray for Yeshua to come quickly. Uh, but I also want to pray for all the believers out there because we're going to get into a situation, uh, I believe, very soon. Brother Zach Bauer made a great video uh, that we're going to have to, we're going to end up underground one day. Hello, Miss Suzanne. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, these, these ministries that, that we're conducting right now uh, on Facebook and, and on YouTube are, are going to come to an end and they're going to come to a close because of the uh, demonic outpouring against the true believer and the one who truly walks with the Father. Uh, it'll be, and I've said, said it many times, it'll be the Christian, 
it'll be the Christian church and the religious crowd that's going to be the persecutor and it'll be those who want to obey the Father and walk in His Word that's going to be the persecuted. And uh, I'm not trying to be a prophet. I just believe that that is, to, that, that is going to be the case. Uh, good point is you'll know uh, uh, you'll know who people are by what they love, uh, and the world loves what what God hates, and the world hates what God loves. It's just that simple. And so we're going to blow the shofar tonight, and then then we're going to open up in prayer. And we're going to pray for this nation, pray for our our country, and then we're going to get right into the Word tonight. I want to try to finish this te this teaching up? I know a lot of you wanted me to go longer last week. And so I'm going to try to get this uh, taken care of because we're going to get into another very important topic. And I'll announce that topic uh, at the end of the broadcast after we get finished. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag and I don't want to uh, basically uh, uh, ruin my thunder. Amen. So let's see if we can blow the shofar tonight and we can get, uh, get uh, uh, Shabbat started. All right, we're ready to go and ready to to do the teaching tonight. Let's uh, let's uh, find a place and pray tonight, and let's ask for Father to meet with us in great power. Father, we do love you. Thank you for your mercy, your kindness. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Father, for salvation through Yeshua Messiah, our Master and our Savior. We ask you tonight, Father, that you would forgive us as a nation. Father, that you would forgive this nation of its sin, its violation of your covenant, its violation of your commands, its violation of your laws. Father, I pray you'll bring us to a place of repentance and you'll pour out a great revival upon this nation. Father, I pray in the name of Yeshua Messiah that you will do an unusual work. Use us, Father, to take the truth to a lost and dying world. Father, I pray that you would open the eyes of the blind, that you'd open the ears of the deaf spiritually, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, that you would place in our heart a desire to walk in accordance to your law and accordance to your commands. I pray, Father, that you would have your will and way in this teaching time tonight, that you would speak through me, use me as thy servant. I pray, Father, that I'd say nothing that would be a reproach to thee, but everything would be according to thy word. I pray you'll guard my lips and tongue, Father, and give me words in which to speak. Help me, Father, to be salt and light. Help us all, Father, to be salt and light. Help us, Father, to, to extend grace to those uh, that do not understand and those that are struggling. I pray, Father, that your will would be accomplished and done. But most of all, that you would be glorified by all that we do. Now meet with us, I pray, in this time. May your power go out throughout the internet. And may you bless this message. May you bless this according to thy will. And we'll love you and thank you and praise you. For it is in the name of Yeshua Messiah we pray these things. Amen and amen. Well, I want you to go to the book of Isaiah tonight. We're going to go back to Isaiah and we're going to pick up where we left off last week. We were talking about, continuing to talk about who is Israel. Uh, and uh, and uh, basically, uh, we had said that our first point that Israel were, was those that agreed with the covenant. Now, I'm going to take it one step further. And I didn't say this before, but I want to go on record to say this, that that. Israel is the body of Messiah. Okay, I want to just clarify that right now. Okay, there's only one body, one body. Okay, and it, and and the Bible tells us, Scripture tells us that it's made up of Jew and Gentile. Okay, it's made up of 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 uh, of Greek. It's made up of Hebrew. It's made up of all that come together to be grafted into one body. There is one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all. One body, one Messiah. What are you laughing at, Mrs. She's uh -huh. that song. Yeah, it's that that's a great song. There is one faith, one body, one. Yeah, it's a great song. Uh, and so Israel is the body. There's no such thing as Israel on this side as the church teaches and then the church over here and no, 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 no. There's one, okay, where the Bible talks about making, making two into one, okay, 
or making one out of out of two should I say and so the whole thing we're talking about is who is the body who is the body of Messiah or who is Israel who is it that's going to inherit eternal life who is it that's going to stand before the throne of Yahweh the throne of God redeemed who is it that's going to lay their crowns down and down at the feet of the Messiah who is it that's going to be uh, 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 standing there and and serving and ministering and ruling with Messiah during the thousand year reign. It's only going to be one group of people and that group of people is the body of Messiah otherwise known as the Israel of God. And so when we talk about who are the children of God, the children of Israel, the children of Abraham, who is it that is the body? Well, it's those, first of all, that agree with the covenant of Yahweh. The second point we, we started last week that we didn't continue in was not only those that, that agree with the covenant, but those that enter into the covenant. And remember I said that a covenant was a contract. A covenant is a contract. It is a pledge, an alliance of friendship. It's a treaty to end hostility. And whenever you, you agree with something, you can agree with it all day long, but until you enter into it, until you sign the paper, basically putting your name on it, there is no, no uh, 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 entering in. You can agree with the contract to buy a home or buy a car, but if you don't sign the papers, you don't get the money. Amen. Uh, I, I'm going to agree the terms. I'm going to get that new car. I'm going to get that new truck. I'm, I'm going to go buy a house, but I don't want to sign no papers because I don't really want to put my name on it. Well, forget it. No money. Okay. You've got to enter into that covenant. And those that enter into covenant with Yahweh are the children of the Father and the children of Yahweh and Israel, the body. Now, I want you to look in Isaiah chapter 56. We're going to go back and we're going to read that like we did last week, verses 1 through 8. And, and this is talking about those that have entered into the covenant uh, with Yahweh. Remember, we said that the covenant was found in Exodus chapter number 20, verse uh, 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 chapter 20 through chapter 24. Okay, it's the covenant. And the covenant is simply two areas or two sections. The first section is our relationship to our Creator. The second section is our relationship to each other. You read through the covenant, read through what the requirements were, read through all those things, and you'll find that it's only in the, the, those two categories, our relationship with our Creator and our relationship with each other. It goes right in line with what Yeshua Messiah said in the, in the New Testament when he said, when, they, when he was asked, what is the great, greatest commandment? And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and then thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We must have the right relationship with our Creator, and we must have the right relationship with each other. And that's what the covenant is. The covenant is having a right relationship with the Father and a right relationship with each other. And so when you look at those things, you look at the, the agreement, that was what Israel agreed to do when they came out of, uh, uh, out of the land of Egypt and they were standing there at the base of Sinai and Yahweh made the covenant with them. I will be your God. You will be my people. This is what I require of you. And they said, all that you say, we will do. And then just a few chapters later, they broke the covenant with the golden calf. Okay. So now in Isaiah 56, verse 1 through 8, we find those that have entered into the covenant and how they are described, basically uh, uh, what that looks like. Okay, so in verse number 1 of Isaiah 56, Thus saith Yahweh, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that had joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people. Let the eunuch say, Behold, neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me to take hold of my covenant. Now, here we go, okay? Leading up, those that have taken hold and have entered into the covenant. 
Number one, there in verse number five, even unto them will I give in mine house within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh to be his servants everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people my sovereign Yahweh which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith yet will I gather others to him beside the those that are gathered unto him. And so we see eight things, eight things in these verses of scripture that describe those who have entered into covenant uh, or to keep the covenant with Yahweh. First of all, they will keep judgment. They'll keep judgment. They'll, they'll keep decisions and execution of judgment, the judgment that Yahweh deems necessary and the judgment that Yahweh deems right. Not only that, but they'll do justice. They'll do justice, righteousness of government and law and righteous acts. You need to understand that, that, that righteousness is and I know in Titus, in Titus chapter number three, verse number five, not by works of righteousness with which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Many people take that verse of scripture and say, well, it's, you know, we, we can't, can't do any, any righteous acts. Oh, yes, we can, but it's not the ones that we make up. It's the ones that Yahweh has set forth to be the righteous acts. The works that he has deemed righteous. We, we do those all day long. We're never going to be judged negatively for doing that which Yahweh has commanded us to do. The righteous acts that Yahweh has laid out and the righteous acts that Yahweh has sanctioned and has approved of, he encourages us to do those on a daily basis. But our own righteous acts, the ones that we think are going to bring us great reward, the ones like the, um, like the Pharisees were doing, uh, excuse me, ones like the Pharisees were doing where they were, oh, well, they're washing their hands before they ate or they were, they were, um, uh, doing, doing their laws, you know, 1500 laws added to the, to the law of Sabbath. Okay. Their works of righteousness, not the things that we've done in order to show that our uh, show that we're being super spiritual, not the Baptist rules or the Methodist rules or the Lutheran rules or the Pentecostal rules or the church rules or the Catholic rules, but it's the ones and the righteous acts that Yahweh has, has laid down that he has sanctioned and that he has found approval with. But he, but those that enter into covenant, they not only keep judgment, but they do justice. There's something else that they do also. They keep the Sabbath. Now, I find it very interesting that, that uh, and I've just heard this uh, again recently. I've started hearing it again. I've, I've heard it for years, but I haven't heard it for a long time. But now there's another, another circle going around that, you know, that they call, they're calling Sunday the Sabbath. They're telling people happy Sabbath and happy Sunday Sabbath and we're keeping the Sabbath. And many people have said for years, and we were even in the same trap, well, we're, we're doing Sunday. We're going to church on Sunday and, you know, we're keeping the Sabbath. But first of all, Sunday's not the Sabbath, number one. Sunday's not the Sabbath. And number two, all that crowd that's doing Sunday, Sabbath, they're not keeping the Sabbath. Because after they get done with church, they're racing, uh, they're trying to beat the Methodists to a salad bar. Amen. And they're going out to eat and they're going up to shopping and they're going over to the grocery store and they're running over to Walmart and they're, they're going up to Sam's and trying to get all their stuff done between services. They get out at 12 o'clock or, or 1230 and they'll run and grab them a sandwich and, and, and get them some lunch and then they'll run off to the grocery store and run off to do this shopping or run off to do that shopping or they'll run home and mow the yard real quick so they can get back to church so they can finish keeping the Sabbath. Isn't that what they do? That's what they do. And so that's not keeping the Sabbath. 
keeping the Sabbath is keeping the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is according to the word of God from Friday night sundown till Saturday night sundown. The seventh day, the day that Yahweh rested. Six days he created and he rested on the seventh. And he said there to keep, keep it holy. That the seventh day was to be holy and separate, separated from the rest of the days. Okay. Well, the seventh day is Saturday, Friday night to Saturday. And, and, the, night, and, and the day always begins at sundown according to the Hebrew calendar and according to the creation calendar. The Bible says in creation that the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. The evening and the morning were the third day. There's really only two times a day. Night and morning. Morning is considered from sun up to sundown and evening is from sundown till sun up. It's kind of like in, uh, over in, in Israel, there's really only two seasons, summer and winter. Where we have spring, summer, winter, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And so just like the Sabbath, the Sabbath is broken up into two segments, evening and morning. And so we are commanded to keep the Sabbath. And those that have entered into covenant with Yahweh are willing to keep the Sabbath. I saw a funny, funny meme today on Facebook. And it had this guy screaming and says, I will do whatever I need to do to get right with God. And, and the other side said, okay, you need to keep the Sabbath and keep God's laws. He said, huh, why do I need to do that? So that's part of the covenant. Part of the covenant, the Sabbath was part of the covenant. Go back to, go back to um, uh, Exodus chapter number 20. Exodus chapter number 20. So we'll see it to begin with, Exodus chapter number 20. I hate it when them pop-ups pop up on my phone. It just blocks the picture out and things like that. Exodus chapter number 20. We'll start there, Exodus chapter number 20 and verse number 8. Exodus chapter number 20 and verse number 8. Okay? Now, verse 8 says, remember the Sabbath day. Remember, how do you remember something that's not already in force? Okay? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Then you're going to go into detail. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it thou shalt... Thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, there's creation, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, made it holy. Now look over, continue on in the book of Exodus and swing over to chapter 23. We're still in the covenant, okay? We're still in the covenant. That's right. This is the seal of Yahweh, Miss Peggy. That's exactly right. This is the seal of those who are in covenant. Real simple, okay? Can't be circumcision because ladies don't get circumcised. Okay? Now watch. Exodus 23, verse number Talks about the talks about the the resting of the land and giving the land Sabbath or giving the land Shabbat in verse number ten and then verse number eleven. And then it goes back to verse twelve. Uh, six days thou shalt do thy work. On the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine donkey may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. All right, there there we go. The Sabbath is part of the covenant. Not only the Sabbath is part of the covenant, but if you'll look in chapter number 23, verse 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, there we see, 18, 19, we see the feast days are a part of the covenant. Christmas is not part of the covenant. Easter is not part of the covenant. Thanksgiving is not part of the covenant. Okay. Um, Valentine's Day, not part of the covenant. Halloween ain't part of the covenant. None of these man-made holidays are part of the covenant, but the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is part of the covenant. Shabbat or Pentecost is part of the covenant. Feast of Tabernacles and or Sukkot is part of the covenant. Okay, so when we, we see that, that those that keep the covenant, they keep just uh, judgment, they, keep, uh, they do justice, and they keep the Sabbath. It's just that simple. The seventh day observation is for rest, for worship, for holiness. It is not to defile. Okay? 
Not only that, but number four, number four, those that are in covenant avoid doing evil. Now, it doesn't mean we're never going to sin. I, now I know there's, you know, I know the Bible talks about that those that are in covenant and those that are born again, those that are saved, do not sin. They don't commit, uh, they don't do iniquity. Basically, what that means is they don't practice lawlessness. They don't practice sin. They're not practicers of breaking the law. Okay. Most law-abiding citizens, even in our country, are not are not uh, habitual lawbreakers. They may break a speeding uh, speed limit from uh, from time to time, but they're not habitual lawbreakers. Okay, and it's the same thing here. Those that are in covenant with Yahweh avoid doing evil. We have no desire to break God's law. We who are in covenant have no desire to be lawless, but we have a desire to do that which pleases the Father. Notice what it says there, back in Isaiah 56. Look back in Isaiah 56, verse number 4. For thus saith Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me. Do we think, do we think, that this new abortion bill pleases our Heavenly Father? No! Do we think that it pleases the Father for us to do what we want to do on, on the Sabbath day? No, it doesn't please the Father. Does it please the Father when we decide that we're going to break God's law because, you know, we're under grace now, so, you know, we're just going to go right... No, that doesn't please the Father. There is no license to sin because we're under grace and mercy. But yet those who are in covenant with the Father... They avoid doing evil. They have no desire to do evil. None whatsoever. Number five. Like I said before, they choose that which pleases Yahweh. What pleases Yahweh? Uh, I need to get this off my screen. This is about to drive me nuts. Watch it. Watch it just leave. There. That's just crazy. Uh, Miss Sharon, I'm going to ask you a question. You're live on Facebook tonight. What is it that Yahweh desires more than anything? And it's better than what? To obey is better than sacrifice. She wouldn't talk loud enough so you could hear her, but she said it. Yahweh requires obedience, and to obey is better than sacrifice. Very clear, okay? And so choosing that which pleases Yahweh, what is it pleases Yahweh? Lawfulness, obedience. Go, go, go to Matthew chapter 7 real, real quick and look there. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit this again in, in our third point. But in Matthew chapter 7, he says there, Yeshua talking, and he says there in chapter number 7, verse number 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Master, Master, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. What is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is that we be obedient. That's the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that we would obey. Well, what, what were the terms of the covenant? Go back to Exodus chapter number 20. Exodus chapter number 20. And we'll see um, Exodus. It's actually chapter number. Let's see. Exodus chapter number um, 23. In verse 20, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. What? If thou do what? If thou obey. Okay? So what does the Father want? He wants us to obey. And so those that are in covenant have a desire to be obedient. They have a desire to choose that which pleases Yahweh. They have a desire to be lawful. Lawful, not lawless. Old Creflo Dollar, he's, he's, a, he's a false prophet. He's, a, he, he's an idiot. Stood up and said that the devil, the devil is tempting us to keep the law. Because in keeping the law, we sin. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, that sin is a transgression of the law. 
That means sin is a breaking of the law. So if the devil is, is tempting us to keep the law, he's tempting us to do what God said to do and to be obedient. Number six, those that are in covenant not only keep judgment, they do justice, they keep the Sabbath, they avoid doing evil, they choose that which pleases Yahweh, but they choose to serve Yahweh. You know, a lot of people, they think they're serving Yahweh because, or they, they're, they're serving God because they sing in the choir or they're mowing the church grass or, you know, we're serving the Lord. We're out passing out tracks and, and all that's fine and good. You know, all that's fine and good. But, but to serve Yahweh is to live for Yahweh on a daily basis, every day. Every day is a day of service. And we go back to that same word. I know that everybody's sick and tired of hearing it, but it's the same thing. Every day is a day of obedience. Every day is a day of obedience. Doing the same things over and over and over and over and over again every day. Okay? Living for Yahweh. Serving Him. Serving Him by being attentive to Him. And by being attentive to Him, we are obedient to His word and to His ways. You know, everybody says we need to follow Jesus. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. How did Jesus walk? How did Yeshua walk? He walked in obedience to the Father. He walked in obedience to the Father's commands. So if Jesus walked in obedience to the Father's commands, if Jesus kept Sabbath, heaven forbid, if Jesus kept the feast, Heaven forbid, if Jesus ate clean, heaven forbid, if, if Jesus did what the Father told him to do, if Jesus was obedient to the Father, then we too, following Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, are to be obedient to the law of God. Remember what Yeshua said, I've not come to abolish the law, but I've come to fulfill it or to preach it fully. Not one jot or one tittle shall pass the law till all be full, fulfilled, till heaven and earth pass. Well, heaven and earth is still here, amen. So those that are in, entered into covenant, they keep judgment, they do justice, they keep the Sabbath, they avoid doing evil, they choose that which pleases Yahweh, they serve Yahweh, but number seven, they love the name of Yahweh. Look there in, back in, uh, uh, in Isaiah 56, verse six. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh. But we need to love his name. You know, many times his name is used as a byword or a catchphrase. You know, one of the commandments is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Useless or worthless. Lowering it down to a man-made level. His name is wonderful. His name is magnificent. He has the highest name. The name above all names. And, and Yeshua Messiah, His name uh, has the name of the Father in Him. Remember what, what Yahweh said there to, to them uh, concerning the uh, covenant? Look back there in Exodus chapter 23. What did He say about that angel? Verse 20 of Exodus 23, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee in the place which I prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Well, who was that angel? Pray tell. Was it Yeshua? He's the only one that the name of the Father's in. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. The ones that are in covenant with Yahweh, even the strangers that were in the land, loved the name of Yahweh and had a desire after the name. They had an intimate personal relationship and affection with their creator. But then number eight, those that are in covenant, they take hold of the covenant. Basically, they own it. The problem with, with most people in today's society, they, they don't really want to take ownership of that which Father has given us. 
He's given us His laws to guide us and to help us in our daily life. He's given us His laws, His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments to help us to walk out His truth and to walk out His will on a daily basis. But there's many that don't want to take ownership of that. But yet, those that take hold of the covenant are those that take ownership of this is my covenant this is my covenant with my God with my Creator you know if, if we ever got to that point you know, we talk about the Bible many times in in Baptist circles and in Protestant circles they talk about the Bible being a love letter a love letter between God and his people I don't have a problem with that at all I don't, I don't have a problem with that at all the problem is we don't own that love letter we don't, we don't take possession of it. Oh, yeah, we've got a Bible, but we don't, we don't take ownership of it. This is my covenant, my agreement. When I made covenant with, with, with Sharon, we got married in September of 1982. We, we are officially old people because we've been married for 36 plus years now. And... Um, I made a promise to her. She made a promise to me. And, and we have owned that covenant. Owned that promise. Matter of fact, I hang it over her head a lot of times. You promise to love me better for better or for worse. Amen. You promise for, for richer or poor, for sickness and health. You know, only 16 years. You know, four richer, four poor, four, four healthy, and four sick. So she's already doubled that. Okay. But yet, we own that covenant. We own that agreement. We took possession of that agreement and said, this is my agreement. I'm holding you responsible and holding you accountable to that. I hold her accountable. She holds me, me accountable. Guess what? We can hold Yahweh accountable because he said, if we will do this, he will be our God. He will be our, our, our fortress. He'll be our shield. He'll be our strong tower. He'll be the one to take care of us. He'll be the one to provide for us. We hold him accountable. But guess what? We, when we break the covenant, that's why it's important that we take ownership and we do everything within the, the best of our ability to live according to that through the faith of Yeshua Messiah putting our faith and trust in Him and walking as He walked in accordance to Yahweh's law and Yahweh's commandments. I'm not talking about sinless perfection, but I'm talking about having the desire to walk with our Creator through our Messiah, Yeshua Jesus Christ. To take hold of the covenant is to, to be firm in it, to be resolute, to be resolved. What's that song? I I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. I am resolved to take ownership and to hold the covenant means you're resolved no matter what, no matter hell or high water. You are going to walk with the Father. You're going to do everything within your power to walk in accordance to, to His law. And when you fall down, you're not going to lay there and you're going to whine like a baby. You're going to get up. You're going to dust yourself off, wipe off the blood, and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward in the power and grace of Yahweh Almighty. Now that's the second point. The first point was those that agree with the covenant are the children of God or Israel. Those that enter into the covenant are the children of God or Israel. But then thirdly, those that keep the covenant are children of God or Israel. Now, these are just verses. I want you to show you some verses that are going to try to bring this thing to a, to a close. Keep, keep me abreast of what time it is, Miss Sharon. 908. 908. I want to read to you 
Matthew Henry's commentary concerning the covenant. I found this to be very interesting because I don't think that Matthew Henry was a Sabbath keeper or else he thought that the Sabbath was on Sunday and so therefore he was keeping the Sabbath. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, I believe Matthew Henry loved the Lord. I believe he was a, was, a, was a believer. I found this to be very interesting. This is his commentary concerning Exodus chapter 24, which was the uh, ratification of the covenant when Moses took the book of the covenant and he sprinkled the, the, the covenant and the people with the blood of the sacrifice. Remember, there's no covenant completion without blood sacrifice. He says, a solemn covenant was made between God and Israel. It was very solemn, typifying the covenant of grace between God and believers through Christ. As soon as God separated for himself a particular people, he governed them by a written word as he has done ever since. God's covenants and commands are so just in themselves and so much for our good that the more we think of them and the more plain, plainly and fully they are explained to us, the more reason we may see to comply with them. Let me say that one more time. God's covenants and commands are so just in themselves and so much for our good that the more we think of them and the more plainly and fully they are explained to us, the more reason we may see to comply with them. The blood of the sacrifice was sprinkled on the altar, on the book, and on the people. Neither their persons, nor their moral obedience, nor their religious services would be accepted by a holy God except through the shedding and sprinkling of blood. Also, the blessings granted to them were all from mercy, and the Lord would deal with them in kindness. So the sinner, by faith in the blood of Christ, renders willing and acceptable obedience. Plain and simple and concise. You know what I think the reason that people don't want to follow the law of God is because it's not been explained and it's not been preached over and over and over and over and over again. We started doing the Torah studies all, what, three years ago, something like that, and we continue to do them ever, every year in order to solidify our position and build up our base, basically, and, and to make sure that our foundation is firm and sure and secure. The problem is many people, they don't, they don't study the foundational principles. They go right to the rooftop. We will go right to heaven. We're going to go right to eternal life. We're going to go right to salvation. We're going to go right to eternal security. We're going to go right to all those things without ever addressing the foundational principles. And the reason that people are afraid of the law is because it's never preached. It's not preached, it's not taught, it's not discussed, it's not spoken of on a consistent basis and repeated on a consistent basis. Because I'll tell you right now, having raised three children and seen them raise their children, the greatest teacher in the world is repetition. You say something enough times, after a while, they'll begin to believe it, whether it's right or wrong. We have heard for the last, let's see, 1973, Roe versus Wade came into to, to effect, and we have heard nonstop in our society that abortion is okay, and now we have a majority of a people believing it and accepting it. We've heard it for the last 30 years, been crammed down our throat, that sodomy and homosexuality is accepted acceptable to God and now the vast majority of Christianity in America is accepting its practices because it's been repeated over and over and over and over and over and over again and we've taught a generation to believe it and to to accept it instead of preaching God's word instead of preaching God's law instead of preaching God's commandments and repeating it over and over and over and over again in our churches we go right to right to some sweet little anecdotal messages uh, in, in order to tickle the tithers, uh, tiptoe through the tithers, make everybody happy instead of telling them what thus saith the Lord God. It's got to be a repetition of God's law, God's command, what God intends and what he requires of us. Plain and simple. What's that verse of scripture in Micah chapter 6 and verse number 8? Let me see if that's the right one I'm thinking about. What, he has shown thee, O man, what is good, 
And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy Elohim and with thy God. There is a requirement. Well, we're under grace. We can do whatever we want to do. No, no you cannot. And if you think you can, you are not born again. You're not saved. You're not one of God's children. You're a child of the devil. It's just that simple. Those that are in covenant with Yahweh, number one, they agree with the covenant. Yes, I agree with it. Number two, they enter into covenant and sign on. And they own it as their own. But then number three, they keep the covenant. Number one, they agree with the covenant. Number two, they enter into covenant. And number three, they keep the covenant of Yahweh. Look in Psalm 106. Psalm 106. We're just going to look at some verses tonight to just sort of solidify this thing and bring this thing to a close. Psalm 106, verses 3 through 5. Psalm 106, verses 3 through 5. Blessed are they that keep judgment. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Yahweh, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. Does that, does that remind you of anything, Miss Sharon? That's, that's remember me, O Yahweh, the song that the Father gave me. Right there, Psalm 106. Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Well, look, go back. I, I, I didn't even have this one on there. Go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Let's, let's just go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The righteous are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Did did you catch that? Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the unrighteous shall perish. Those that are children of God, those that are Israel, keep the covenant. Period. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 1 through 6. Psalm 119, verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of Yahweh. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy, thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Uh, Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter number 7. I read this one a little earlier. We'll revisit it again. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work lawlessness. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. No judgment against those that are going to do the things of God and follow in his ways. No, no, he's going to be likened unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, 
shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Luke chapter 12. Verse 37, 38. You notice I'm just, I'm just going right, right straight through. Luke chapter 12. Verse 37 and 38. Luke 12, 37, 38. I, I, I know there's a lot of them out there, guys. I know there are. And you can put them up there. That, that's, that's great. But it'll take us a lifetime to go through all of them. Amen. Luke chapter 12, verse number 37 and 38. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he cometh, shall find watching. Also means doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And, he, if, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. John 14, verse 15. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 21, same chapter. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judah saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Master, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. Notice the requirement, the prerequisite. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father which sent me. Look in uh, John 15. Verse number 10. John 15 verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another. That you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, and a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. 1 Corinthians, so well, let's see, uh, Galatians chapter, no, no, Revelation chapter, 1 John, I'm sorry, man, I'm just, I got, got myself all tang tangled. 1 John chapter number 2, 1 John chapter 2, and verse number 3, 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 3, 1 John chapter 2, verse number 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of Elohim perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Look in Revelation chapter 22, verse number 14. Revelation 22, verse 14. I'm going to go backwards to Galatians in just a minute, but I wanted to get, it, get to this before I closed out. Revelation chapter 22, verse number 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. No access into the gates of the city and no access into the tree of life without the commandments of Yahweh. It's just that simple. Now go to Galatians chapter 3. Who are the children of God? The children of God, they are the, the Israel of God. They are the true Israel. Not the Israel over there in the Middle East, but the Israel of God. The true Israel. Those that have been born, not of flesh and blood, but born of spirit. Those who have been grafted in, brought in, those that are homeborn, and those that are so, sojourners, adopted into the family of God through Yeshua Messiah. Galatians chapter 3. Verse number seven. Look at what it says. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Verse number nine. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. 
Verse 26. Ye are, for ye are all the children of Yahweh by faith in Messiah Yeshua. For as many of you as have been baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Messiah Yeshua. And if ye be Messiahs, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14 and I close with this thought. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But certainly not that I should glory save in the stake of our Master Yeshua Messiah by whom the world is impaled unto me and I am to the world. For in Messiah Yeshua neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of Yahweh. The Israel of God. Romans chapter 11 has a great, the great chapter on being grafted in. Put into the adoption, the adoption of, uh, of children. Whereby we, no, whereby we no more cry Abba Father or, or, or we cry Abba Father because we're adopted into the family of God. Galatians chapter number 4 and verse number 4. Verses 1 through 4, verses 1 through 5. Who are the children of God? Who is Israel? But those that agree with the covenant, those that enter into covenant, and those that keep the covenant. And what is the covenant? Well, the covenant is the law. No, the covenant is the agreement to keep the law. But what's included in the covenant? The book of the covenant? Or all of those things there in, in Exodus chapter 20, uh, uh, chapter 20 through chapter 24. Our relationship to our Creator and our relationship to each other. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. It's just really simple. It's not hard. It's really not hard, folks. A child could understand this. It's real simple. Just own the covenant. Take possession of the covenant. Take ownership of it. And say... Yahweh, Father God, I believe you, and I want to be in covenant with you through your Son, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If you're watching by way of YouTube, you're watching by way of Facebook, and you have never, ever, ever believed on the Lord, believed on Jesus Christ, on Yeshua Messiah for salvation, you never called out to God. You never believed on Him. You've never taken the opportunity to understand who our God is and what He requires and what He expects. Then you can call out to Him and you can believe on Him and you can begin to walk in accordance to His law and accordance to His rules and accordance to His guidelines. And then as you begin to grow and walk in accordance to Him and believe on Him and repent and turn from your sinful ways and reject sin and reject lawlessness and receive Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior and believe on Him who had sent Him, then you can be baptized and be joined to Yahweh through Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Messiah and our Lord. You can do that. You can do that. You don't need a church. You don't need a priest. You don't need a rabbi. You don't need a pastor. All you need is faith. Faith and repentance. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Messiah than to trust and obey. We're going to read the Shema tonight. That concludes the covenant. I don't know how many weeks it was. I think it was three. This might be the third week. We're going to read the Shema tonight. The Shema is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. As we always do, we close out with the challenge, the hear and obey, the challenge to, to be obedient. And that's the challenge that I make for you today. I challenge you to be obedient to your Heavenly Father, to your Creator. Call out to Him while it is time. Call out to Him while it is early. Call out to Him before it's eternally too late. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one. 
And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And in Numbers chapter 6, we'll, we'll ask for the blessing. We'll ask for the blessing from the Father. Amen. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, 25, and 26. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom, my friends. Thank you for joining us. Hey, get in covenant. Get in 